Welcome to the Married to Myself podcast. You're listening to the very first episode. Are you married to an introvert or an extrovert? <laughs> How does that work out for your relationship? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. In this corner, weighing in at none of your business pounds, undefeated in 303 fights, Current world lightweight champion, the author, mother, grandma, and not your average wifey of 20 plus years, Dallas Collins. And in this corner, weighing in at a rock solid dad bod pounds before drying after a shower, the contender, Jonathan, loves to argue with his wife, Collins. Fighters, ready? Fight. Hello and welcome to the Married to Myself podcast. My name is Delise. I am a writer, author, speaker, blogger. My most recent project is the book Growing into a Mature Marriage from Kindergarten to College, where I compare marriage, the different maturity levels, social interactions, issues, arguments, and resolutions to the different grades we find ourselves in in school in correlation to those different maturity levels. I have my husband here with me, Jonathan. Introduce yourself. How's it going? I'm uh, Jonathan Collins. Uh, been married to Delise now 22 years. Yes. So we are approaching our 22nd anniversary. We were together two years before we get mar- got married, so it's been about 24 years together. We have a 21-year-old who is also married. He just celebrated his third year, third. and they have a about-to-be two-year-old, our grandson, We're here to talk to you about the book. Tonight is about introverts versus extroverts. The inspiration for this conversation came from a recent debate slash argument uh, with my husband about what I am. You think you know yourself until you've been married for a while and your partner points out something totally different um, than what you see in yourself. That's what tonight's conversation is about. I have always thought that I was an extrovert. To give you a little background, I have grown up um, being on stage and performing. We moved to Las Vegas on our way to LA and we never left Vegas. We stayed there for five years um, while I was working in the entertainment industry. So right off bat, I associated that with being an extrovert. Um, I love talking to crowds, teaching um, in my younger days I loved going out and partying and being in the clubs so I never would have thought anything different of myself um, than being an extrovert but Jonathan has a different has a different opinion and we talk to married couples a lot as you could imagine after being married for a little over two decades people come to us Um, from all walks of life with their questions and conversation and complaints about marriage and their relationships. And we have recently talked to another couple who pointed out that they just hit the same argument. Uh, She thought she was one thing and her husband's like, no, you're definitely this with some really good um, points as to why he felt she was what he thought she was. So let's get into it. I think I'm an extrovert, and you say no way. Uh, I I say you uh, you're an introvert that plays an extrovert, um, kind of like uh, not acting, as in your this is a phony thing, um, but you know how to blend. Uh, I would consider more of chameleon blending in when you need to blend. Okay, so. It's funny you say not phony because that was going to be my first response is so you say that I'm I'm acting when I'm out in public and I'm enjoying conversation with people and, um, you know, having back and forth banter that it's not you're not saying that I'm not being authentic. You're just saying that I'm I'm adapting to that environment, but I much rather be uh, alone and by myself. Is that why you're? trying to put me in the box of introvert what is it about being married to me that makes you see something different than what I see in myself 
Well, um, I can only speak to, you know, a background or a history that I understand. Um, so I'm going to try and give some examples. Hopefully it can help you to better understand what I'm saying. Um, so I, I'm a car guy. I, I really like cars. Um, I prefer to drive General Motors vehicles. Um, so if I had to go somewhere, uh, if, if I had a choice to pick, I would purchase a General Motors every time. Um, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't drive a Ford or, you know, if that was my rental car, I wouldn't jump into it and say, you know what? Hey, it's a Ford, it's a rental. Um, so that's how I look at you as an introvert versus an extrovert. I, I, I think you prefer to do the things that an introvert would do. And that's just based on me, me watching um, what you do and, and where you go and where you would prefer to be. Okay. And so I have a few questions from what you said, because I didn't understand your Ford reference. <laughs> if you got a, you prefer GMC, but if you got a Ford from a rental company. I would drive it. And so that you're associating that to making you an extrovert? No, no. I'm associating that to making you a introvert. <laughs> because I wouldn't drive the Ford? Yeah. Um, so the just the opposite. It's it's what you prefer. So based on what you prefer, that's what you would lean towards. Mm, you're saying you're more flexible. Yes. But I would not take the Ford because I am. I, I think you would avoid it at all costs. Uh, because it would make me uncomfortable. And then you equate that to being more of an introvert because things have to be a specific way for an introvert because they're not as uh, flexible. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I would consider, yeah, the, the flexible. It's hard when you give those solid definitions, you know, to say that you're not as flexible. Again, I've seen you blend like a chameleon. Um, but if you could avoid the blend, you would avoid the situation. Whereas uh, what I see, what I consider an extrovert would would be to uh, run towards uh, whatever it is that they need to blend into, um, even if at first they're going to stick out like a sore thumb. They okay. would be okay with that. So let's stop using hypotheticals <laughs> okay. and talk about some real situations in our life. And I think our listeners will be able to relate better um, if we talk, you know, some real stuff. So I know that in the past you and I have had arguments because... Um, I have been made to feel uncomfortable, for example, when you initiate, you know, going to meet the neighbors or stopping to talk to a complete stranger. And I feel like I'm interrupting someone or being strange by like poking my nose into their life. And they didn't give any indicator that they wanted me to come over and say, hi, how are you? You know, I live right here. You live right there. Like, so... I know for you, you look at me and say, oh, that makes you uncomfortable. Bam, you're an introvert who can play an extrovert because you are a people person to some capacity. Um, I don't know. I know that we've also had disagreements about... Um, I would prefer to know that someone's coming over. If someone pops up at the house and they didn't call first, that might seem like an inconvenience to me. But to you, it's like... It's whatever. They popped up, so they're here, and I'm going to enjoy that. I feel like I have that same response. Okay, they're here. Let's make the best of this, figure out, you know, what we're supposed to get out of this or what they need to get out of this, the reason they're here. It doesn't have to be anything complex. It could just simply be, I just wanted to see your face, miss you guys, how you doing? All good. But you knowing me and us being together so long know that that kind of makes me uncomfortable or takes away from my time, whereas you don't feel that any time is yours. At any point, someone can call you, step into your space, and you don't feel any um, loss or violation or inconvenience from that. I think that people are free to, to come into my space until I choose that you're not. So I'll give you some examples. So we live in a, a neighborhood that you grew up in. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, we actually purchased the the home from your parents and when even when we moved in the very first day I met or got to know uh, two or three of the neighbors that your mom had lived here for 20 years and didn't know them you know knew their name but had no relationship with them whatsoever so for me uh, even in you know walking the dog I know now, you know, 12 of our neighbors' names, I know what kind of cars they drive, I know, you know, what kind of animals they have, some of them, how many kids they have. And we can probably say that we've walked the dog the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. But inside of that, I could ask you a question and say, well, how many neighbors do you know outside of our cul-de-sac? Do you know any of their names? So those are the things that I would point out. It doesn't make you bad. It just says that you would prefer not to start those conversations or even get that information. Mm -hmm. That is my understanding of uh, the intro. Um, When we go to even uh, a party, I think you become a chameleon and and you can smile, you know, when people are smiling at you. um, But you're not going to chase anyone down to say, hey, what's your name? You know, how you doing? I like your shoes. I like your hair. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, a supermodel in the room or you would. Avoid them uh, or yeah, they have to come to me first. Yeah, mm-hmm. You would have to catch the eye contact and the smile, almost the wink. Hey, and then. So I can speak to that. My years um, pursuing, um, you know, the things I was pursuing when we lived in Las Vegas and being amidst people in the entertainment industry i i got a phobia of people being starstruck or being fake uh, because of a per- who a person is and because of the people that i had to be around working in a five star five diamond resort it was actually required of me not to treat people different you know because they're famous or what have you so now it's actually even in if i'm not in a work setting and i'm around someone um who has clout or fame or whatever it's actually just built into me to to either completely ignore them unless they speak to me because i'm more worried about me coming off like um like I'm trying to talk to you just because of who you are that and maybe that's an issue in my head because I used to be in those circumstances so often but I don't think that that's necessarily fair to say yep put the stamp on it you're an introvert because I noticed that everyone has to come up to you first you won't go up to them um and as far as the smiles you don't have to smile at me first before I'll smile back because I'm a nice person. I'm always smiling. That's not what I, I smile at everyone. That's not what I said. Come you on. said if someone, in order said, to said exchange you guys won't smiles, have they a have a conversation. You you won't begin to talk to each other unless the the uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Unless first that book is uncovered with a smile. Mm-hmm. Unless you look over and you guys catch eye contact and you know that they were looking at you and then okay, they smiled yeah. <laughs> and then it was, okay, now I know that we can talk. Yeah. Whereas that's not me. Like, I'm going to come in if I see something or if you, if, if I see something about you that maybe I like. Maybe it's your watch or your shoes or your hat or it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and I'm, you'll put yourself in anyone's bubble or conversation because that's who you are. And I'm not attacking you and saying that. I think that that's an awesome thing. But it's all perception. Some people think that's irritating. Some people think it's amazing. It's obviously served us well. Because we you know, we own a very successful small family business. And that has really been... Um, that was started, sparked, and flows the way it flows. Because of you and your personality. And your go-get-it attitude. Whereas I am a writer because I do like to be isolated um, to work my creativity. Um, It's fun for me to collab with other people, but I think I get more joy out of being able to fully express myself without boundaries of other people's opinions. So if that makes me an introvert, (laughs) then I can kind of agree with you. (laughs) Well, for me, I I think uh, the the personality... um, feeds into those things like you like to write and in order to 
right, it requires um, alone time, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, if if there was 30 kids running around or, or, you know, a husband, me in the background, hey, babe, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. When you're trying to type um, or, or study of, of any sort, um, that would interrupt what you enjoy. So those are part of the things that makes me uh, say, ah, I consider you an introvert. Um, also based on the things that you enjoy. Um, you know, if someone was a mechanic, uh, you could probably go out and talk to them uh, while they were wrenching on a, on a car um, and they would be able to hold a conversation and still get the work done. Uh, that would also feed into them being able to be more of an extrovert because they can also do uh, maybe their job or what they love. So let let me stop you. Are you saying because you feel like you're a better multitasker that that ties into being an extrovert, but because I want to be left alone to do my work, otherwise I feel interrupted or I can't continue to work and talk, that that also lends itself to me being an introvert? I, I don't. I don't like even the word multitasker. Okay. Uh, so when I said when I I said mechanic, I meant like uh, like building a race car or building a low rider. Um, the fact that that's something that they could do and have a conversation, you know, and um, it and continue, uh, you know, whatever that process is, um, makes it more makes it easier to be an extrovert because you can do what you enjoy doing while other people are around and while other people are interacting with you. Whereas a writer, uh, from what I know of one, um, or a reader um, that likes to just get into their novels for hours on time, can't also do that while interacting with someone else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the room has to be quiet, Yeah, you know. So how does that then tie into um, my life? You know, 10 years ago, we're living in Las Vegas and I'm constantly with a group of other creatives and we're doing plays and skits and entertaining, you know, stage performances. Did you also see me as an introvert at that stage? Um, n no, no. I, but I, I felt like you were searching then. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was almost like you were playing. Again, we're, we're talking about acting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was the end goal in the acting? If, like, if the end goal is I can make as much money as I would like, and then that way I don't have to continue coming out and hanging out with these people. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the people. I enjoyed the interaction. Yeah, <laughs> you see it totally different. That's funny. So you saw that as let me get to this financial goal so that I no longer have to fraternize with people. It, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it seems so harsh, but I actually know a lot of people uh, that have used those words. And I, I mean, full, you know. But I've never used those words. Uh, I wouldn't say never. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. But, so if, if someone asked you a question and said, what is your ideal uh, vacation weekend? Mm -hmm. um, I'd be in the Maldives in a overwater hut with uh, amazing food a spa with massages, my husband, and probably get to write <laughs> <laughs> on my laptop. What is your husband doing while you're writing? Massaging my feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That... No, my feet are super ticklish, so that was of just me being funny. Um, just there in my presence, and I know that sounds selfish because you're like, if I don't enjoy writing, you think I want to sit there while you're writing? No, no, it's not. It's not selfish. It is what is your 
ideal good time. Yeah. And that's the answer to what I truly am at my core. I, I, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for a lot of people, they could answer that question and then still argue the, no, but I'm not a extrovert. I'm not an introvert. I mean, mm-hmm. So it, if they actually sit down and, you know, I'm thankful enough that we've made it to a point in our life uh, that we can now sit down and actually look at what it is we want. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. I see it all around me. So when you when you get that time, now you actually start asking the hard questions. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people divorce at 15 years, yeah. at 20 years, yeah. at, at this point mm-hmm. that we're at because they go, man, I've actually been doing all of this and but now I have the opportunity to do exactly what I want to do, and this ain't it. Yeah. So when you can actually sit down and, and, and have these conversations and say, well, what is your ideal weekend? Well, awesome. We should do that one time. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, and then the reverse. Well, awesome. What is my ideal weekend? Um, what, what do I feel recharged by? Because mm-hmm. for some people it's, it's sleeping cuddled up by the fire for two days or, mm-hmm. you know, a week. And then some people it's like, man, I got to get as much people around me for the energy, the, the, the party. And then that'll help me to push through and flow. Let's, let's go to a family reunion. Like a what? Mm-hmm. That is not a bad, that is not vacation. Mm-hmm. It's not vacation for you. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's two different personality types at its core. Yeah. Yeah. So there was something last week. I got a little emotional because it hurt my feelings. Um, So I've been hearing that you don't like people for years. And I've always fought that. And I'm like, stop saying that. That is not true. I'm not going to accept that about myself as a truth because I know that it's not true but there's something that you see in me that leads you to continuously say that my take is you're comparing me to you and because when I don't want people around or don't want to necessarily have the conversations or answer my phone you almost never feel that way about anyone no matter who the person is and so I think the comparison has you putting the introvert label on me or saying that I don't like people um, what what do you have to say about that? Well, I think last week uh, we had some witnesses and uh, we also, you know, was able to dig a little bit deeper uh, with a family member that was there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also went back. Those are words that you have spoken out of anger. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. it's uh, when a, when a person has actually been difficult or you know, rude or tried to pull me into something in the family that had nothing to do with me, then maybe my reaction was, man, people are difficult or I don't like people. Um, And yes, out of emotion, I think we say, I know that we all say things that we don't really mean because I know I don't dislike all people, um, but can feel safe. Yeah, can definitely feel safe or um, with some distance. Are those considered, uh, is it Freudian slips? Freudian slip? What did I say? Um, no, when when you're frustrated or angry and then you say, man, I don't like people. Yeah. You know, is that is that something out of your heart that's now speaking? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it mm. happens often with race. Mm-hmm. And we'll hold that to people till they die mm-hmm. if... If when they got mad, they said something racist, that mm-hmm. means that's in you. Right, right. So so what's, what's the difference when it's it's just something personal and you're frustrated and something fires out of you yeah. that you can actually see on a day-to-day basis anyway, and right. now it's just boiled up so, so high. So, no, I don't think that you don't uh, enjoy people. I don't think that, uh, you know, the the words, I don't like people. 
Um, but what do I think about your preference? I think that you would prefer um, to be um, isolated. Um, I think you that you would have more fun, you know, uh, with one person or even by yourself um, somewhere, uh, you know, doing what you like to do, you know, what, mm-hmm. you, you, you. And, and I don't consider those things selfish. I, I, I just consider them, um, you know, understanding who you are. And I think, you know, the the wealthiest people in the world, not not only including money, but physically, mentally, uh, you know, and financially has figured out and has understand stood who they, who they are, are so that they can, you know, guide that. A Absolutely. Bit better. Yes. Self-awareness is crucial to success. Um especially if we're talking, you know, wealth and financial independence, you're going to find when you meet those people, talk to those people, the components that have come together to allow them to grow to the point they're at. That is always one of the factors is self-awareness to be aware of who you are, because none of it has to be viewed as negative. You just understand your strong points, your weak points, what fuels you, what gives you energy, what you need. And so to bring that back to marriage, for us not to down each other by saying things like, you just don't like people out of frustration, but really understanding that maybe one person needs to see their family more often. One person needs to have some get-togethers more often. One person needs you to come out and you know, put on a smile and be a part of that interaction because that's what fuels their tank, gives them energy to move forward. At the same time, recognizing that the other person may need the exact opposite, but never um, coming down on each other for that. But recognizing that that balance holds a lot of power and respecting the other person for who they are really allows your marriage to thrive and grow and be a, an awesome partnership because you're not judging each other for being different. And most marriages, you are going to be married to your opposite in a lot of a lot of ways. Yep. No, I, I 100 percent agree with you. Um, I think having these conversations are, are huge and powerful. Um, I would say If you can um, figure out how to explain this in in any conversation, that that it would be great. You know, for me, me saying to you, uh, I think you're an introvert that knows how to play an extrovert, Mm -hmm. uh, is me trying to explain, I see what you like to do. And I'm thankful that that you blend over here with what I like to do. Um, And how do we keep that going? Uh, I think one of the the biggest things, and it's kind of going along with what you said, is if if you're fighting against yourself Mm -hmm. because you don't know who you are, Mm -hmm. or even you're mad at what other people say you are, Mm -hmm. maybe they see something in you that you should kind of tap into and and use to a benefit. Right. Um, But if you're fighting against yourself, you're not flowing. True. And and you're, you're using a lot of wasted energy. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would rather a person flow, you know, when it's their time, they're like, sweet. uh, All right. We went and did your thing. And with all of your people now, let me get into my, flow so that I can grow me so that I can grow my health my wealth yes Um, which brings us to the title of this podcast married to myself I titled it that because really understanding who you are is the most important part of having a successful marriage that if you truly love yourself understand who you are have good self-awareness um that is going to play well into you now being a good spouse the book is called growing into a mature marriage from kindergarten to college it compares the maturity levels a quick example of that 
would be two kids arguing over a toy. As adults looking at that, that seems like a juvenile, immature, simple problem to solve. You just need to share. But we have those same arguments throughout our life and on into um, the older ages and phases of our marriage where now we are fighting over money or things or how to raise the kids. And if you take it back to elementary school and can apply the same concept that you would tell, you know, a kindergartner, you just need to share and apply that to the more mature issues and complex issues you're having. The book is on Amazon.com, uh, BarnesandNoble.com, Target.com. You can get it at my website, DeliseCollins.com. This is our first episode. Thank you for listening. If you're here in Colorado, uh, Tatter Trevor Boat Store also is carrying it. Yes. And remember, the mature marriage was once an immature, sloppy, hot mess. We all have to start somewhere. Love yourself so you can love each other. We love you and we'll talk to you on the next one. Who's beating who to the punch in your next bet? And is the fight still in you? If you need support staying in the ring and keeping the good fight for your relationship, stay tuned for the next broadcast. Hey guys, so I just wanted to get back on here really quick um, before I publish this podcast and add that I know we presented this one as a fight or an argument, but a lot of times, actually most of the time nowadays for us, don't really have real arguments. It's more of the discussion you just witnessed. That was us being real in the moment. Um, It probably didn't help the fact that we'd already talked about this maybe four or five times, just trying to resolve it. Those were a little more heated. Stay tuned. We never know how the next ones are going to go. We... Just want to be real with you. That is our intention. So if it gets emotional, someone gets in their feelings and that's what you're going to hear. And if it sounds exactly like what you just listened to, that's just because it is what it is. That is something we pride ourselves in is that we have learned how to argue. It takes a lot of energy to be married and to stay married. And if you can learn how to um, preserve your energy by not allowing your emotions to become a part of the conversation and just have a mature back and forth debate uh, to make your points, to understand each other better, to defend yourself, to accuse <laughs> whatever you're doing. And those are points that are made in the book. That is like the foundation of the book is if you can exclude your emotions and have good conversation, be able to play offense and defense. There's so much that you can learn. So this one didn't turn out to be the fight that uh, we had it announced to be. But stay tuned because you never know. We're human and we have our ups and downs and some days are are just really different (laughs) than others. That was a real argument if that's what you want to call it and we hope that through these podcasts coming up we will be able to show you how to have disagreements like that and get away from the yelling screaming crying slamming doors walking away never resolving issues that's why we're here that's my heart um that's my husband's heart It's something that we've been doing um, without seeking it out because it's been coming to us, like I said earlier, from couples from all over. They kind of come out of the woodworks and we have very, very long conversations. So I'm surprised that we're just now coming to this. Let's just have a podcast where we talk about these things. There you have it. Go back into your corners. And then come back into the center and hug. It's going to be okay. Marriage is difficult, but it doesn't have to be. It's just going to take some information and some mentors to get you to the next level so that you no longer have to carry the frustration that you've been carrying. We love you guys, and we'll talk to you on the next one. You just listened to the official first episode of Married to Myself. I am your announcer, Jason Head. This has been a Clear Cut Concepts production in association with the published work Growing into a Mature Marriage from Kindergarten to College. Available on Amazon.com, Target.com, eBay, and the Denver famous Tattered Cover Bookstore. Who's beating who to the punch in your next bet? And is the fight still in you? If you need support staying in the ring and keeping the good fight for your relationship, stay tuned for the next broadcast. Bye, Felicia.